this is okay double integral when you integrate function 1 what does it give you the double integral over d gives you the area of the region d right because we are taking smaller uh, uh, triangle uh, uh, smaller pieces and then integrating when it is a function of two variables that is the area when it is three variables that gives you the volume of the solid bounded by uh, below the curve below the surface that is equal to f x y that is one way of visualizing it i think these examples are okay okay i think i think these examples we can read so let me uh, say what i want to what is this multiple integrals okay examples then again examples are there for example let me, i think this will be interesting to see that example what is that because that will, let us find out the volume of the cylinder bounded by the plane z is equal to 0 and z equal to 4 minus y so let us try to visualize it how does it the object look like Right. That is why I am trying to do this example. x square plus y square equal to 4, that is a cylinder. Right? What is the axis of the cylinder? x axis because x is independent, x is not mentioned there. Right? So, at any point x, if you want to look at what are the points in the cylinder, then they are x square plus y square less than or equal to 4. That means, section, any section of the cylinder is the disk y square x square plus y square less than or equal to 4. So, it is a circular cylinder right every point the section is a circle right boundary between z is equal to 0 and z is equal to 4 minus y. So, it is a cylinder if you visualize x axis as okay, then z is equal to 0 that is the bottom okay. z is equal to 0 that is the bottom and up to how high it goes z is equal to 4 minus y right is a function of y only x is independent. So, what will be the triple integral look like projection is x square plus y square less than or equal to 4 equal to 4 right. So, that is the region r. So, region r is x y say that x square plus y square less than or equal to 4 right and what is the region d the volume of the cylinder. So, what is the d? So, d is x y and z such that x y belongs to r okay. and where does z vary? z goes from z is equal to 0 and top is 4 minus y. Right. So, this part you can write this r if you like you can write it as x y type 1 if you want to write x goes from minus 2 to plus 2 right and y goes from y square is less than or equal to 4 minus x square. So, the positive part will be square root of 4 minus x square uh, minus less than or equal to positive part 4 minus x square right clear. So, when you want to integrate so you will be integrating x between minus 2 to plus 2 integrate y goes from minus square root of 4 minus x square to plus square root of 4 minus x square and z goes from 0 to 4 minus y 1 dz dy dx. So, that will be the integral ok right. So, let us uh, so that is what 
it looks like. So, let us dy or dx whichever way you want to write. So, you can integrate. Okay. Let us do one more. Find the volume of the agent D and close between two surfaces this and this. z is equal to x square plus 3 y square and z is equal to 8 minus x square minus y square. In these two surfaces, right, so it is like one surface, another surface at the bottom and the region enclosed, right. So, how do you find out uh, the projection onto x y plane? It is the intersection of two surfaces, one surface, another surface intersecting. So, there will be a intersecting curve right that will be give you the projection onto the x y plane. So, how do you find the intersection that curve? This is where the two are intersecting. So, z is same for both. So, z of one surface is equal to z of other surface. So, when you equate these two, so you equate x square plus 3 y square is equal to 8 minus x square minus y square you will get that surface. Right, so that is a so that is a curve where the two intersect, and that is going to be the projection. Are you able to visualize? Yes. Imagine one cup like this, another cup like this intersecting somewhere. Okay, that is a solid. So when you project it, this region will get projected onto x y plane. That is the region R. And what is the solid? For every point, it goes from the lower surface to the upper surface. Right. So you can write down the integral very easily. So, project onto the region in the x y plane. So, and that you can write as that will be an equation in x square and y square only. So, that is a type 1 you can write it as x goes from minus 2 to 2 that curve projected y goes from 4 minus x square square root 2 plus lower part to the upper part the projection only. Okay. And the surface, so that is the from this to this. You only have to find out which is the lower surface, which is the upper surface, right? Out of the given ones, which one is the lower, which is the upper, because you have to go from the lower limit to the upper limit, right? So you have to find which values of z gives you the lower, which values of z will give you, okay? So you put some values and analyze. So that is how triple integral. So, there is computation part, so I leave it, okay. So, it gives you the volume of the solid, okay. Other there are many integrals are possible, so you can write this as type 1, type 2, and so on. So, let us not go into all this. What is this? Again, something similar. So, for example, z is equal to this, z is equal to this, then you find the intersection of the two, right. What is the common thing? This equal to this, so that gives you 2 x square plus y square equal to 1. So, what does that look like? Is a x y equation in x and y only, that is a curve, right, where they intersect. So, that means that is a projection onto the x y plane. So, that is a ellipse, right. 2 x square plus y square equal to 1. So, that is a projection. So, that ellipse, you have to draw that ellipse and see what is the major axis, minor axis and analyze, okay. So, these are all you should sit down and analyze these things. So, that is what it looks like, okay. So, because, so that will be the common part and, okay. Next, what we want to do is what is called a change of variable formula. Okay. So, that is what we have started looking at last time. Okay. Namely, in the plane, we said given a point, you can draw coordinates x and y, 
right. So, R2 which is all as a set x y such that x and y belonging to R, this notation comes because every point in the plane that is a geometric object right, a plane. So, what is the way of describing it? Every point in the plane is a gets associated with a point P with coordinates x and y and every point P with coordinate x and y will give you a point in the plane. So, the geometric object which is a plane can be described analytically as right that is a way of locating a point in the plane. And we said there is another way of locating a point in the plane, you can have a reference line O x and take a point P. How do I locate the point P? You can find out what is the distance of that. So, this is the point P. So, what is the distance O P? So, let us call this distance is equal to some r okay. and from x x from this reference line how much you have to turn to go to that line that is the line O p. So, that is the angle theta. Okay. So, every point p can also be represented if you know what is r what is theta. So, these are what are called polar coordinates. So, these are what are called the polar coordinates right. So, if this point has got Cartesian coordinates x and y then what are the polar coordinates? What is the relation if I want to transform Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates? So, what is the relation? So, this is my if I want to translate that. So, this is my y and this is my x and this is theta right. So, what is x is equal to x is equal to if this distance is r. So, what is x is equal to and what is y equal to r cos theta and r sin theta where r is bigger than if p is not origin right. So, then it is r is bigger than 0 and theta is between 0 and 2 pi. So, that is a relation. So, you can write x is equal to this another way of writing uh, okay. So, that is the relation between x and y. So, you can if you know theta and r you can find x and y. If you know x and y you can find r and theta. How do you find r? So, r square is equal to x square plus y square right. r is positive so implies so implies r is equal to positive square root of x square plus y square and theta is y by x uh, tan theta is y by x. So, you can find out theta is equal to tan inverse y by x. So, that is the relations between x and y and r and theta. You can go from one coordinate system to another right ok. Let us look at some more. So, this is in R2. Let us look at in uh, sorry mm, ok. Let us look at uh, R3 what is possible. So, we have got x, y and z. By the way uh, this meant, so these are polar coordinates and I, I should have said that for every point in the plane you get r theta a pair and every r theta gives back you a point in the plane. So, that is a one to one correspondence geometric object and that and to visualize this try to uh, visualize that uh, at this point if I take a circle 
of radius r then all the points on this circle will have same r right distance is same only theta is going to change between 0 to 2 pi right so you can imagine uh, in the cartesian coordinates right you are looking at so you are looking at this as the corner of a uh, of a this is a corner of a rectangle right so you can imagine the whole of uh, r2 as built up of rectangles okay here you can imagine whole of r2 as built up of, of circles every point in the plane will lie on some circle that will determine its r and how much where on point on the circle that will give you the theta so visualizing r2 as concentric circles okay fill, filled up of concentric circles so what we want to look at is this one now so cartesian coordinates so let us look at there is a point p with uh, components x y and so x y and so let us say z so how do you find this uh, geometrically how do you find these points so let us uh, draw a perpendicular okay this is my z okay projection onto the x y plane x is equal to 0 y equal to 0 what is z and having reached z you should move either in the direction of x or in the direction of y so you can move in the direction of x or in the direction of y that means you will get these points right so this is your uh, y and this is your x so how do you reach a point move along okay so that gives you z and then move along the y axis and then move along z x x axis so this is same as y is it okay so if you like you can remove that point you can remove this so let us say that is z z is black green is y so this is green that is y and z is x so from any point move along z axis right and then move along y axis and move along x axis so you can see the earth you need three directions you need three directions to reach a point okay from the point to the origin and same backwards given any point you can reach by traveling along this so that is why this r3 is called three dimensional you need three dimensions and a reference point so these are the cartesian coordinates So if these are the Cartesian coordinates, what other ways? So what in the Cartesian coordinates geometrically what we are doing? We are looking at a box whose x whose one side is x, other side is y, third side is z, and this is the corner of that box. So we are looking at parallelopipeds. One corner is at the origin, other is some other corner, right? That is the diagonal one. And imagine the whole space being filled up with these parallelopipeds okay so that is the cartesian coordinates another way of visualizing this would be let us look at uh, this point as a point on a cylinder as a point on a cylinder this is the point on a cylinder of circular cylinder of radius what is that radius it is at, at some height z okay now how do you locate this point how high you go on that cylinder right how high you will go on that cylinder and on the cylinder where will the point be where will be the point on the cylinder 
okay. I want to locate all the points on the cylinder, okay. So all the points on the cylinder are located by the height and the distance, right. So Z is as it is, okay. X and Y. So if I look at this, you this is a circle. There is a point, and it is a point x square plus y square equal to something, right? So we get polar coordinates. So x and y, so polar coordinates r and theta. How do you get r and theta? How do you get r and theta? So imagine this is here now that point is lifted up or down depending on z, okay. So this is the radius. So what is the radius? Once you have, okay, so let me, let me draw it again so that you are able to visualize. So this is, sorry. So uh, if I have a set, so that will give me, so this height is Z. And let us say this. Uh, Okay, what color I should use? Okay, black. So let us say. Oh, that's too big. So that is the point. Okay, so uh, let us. Uh, I'm just uh, re revising it again. What the coordinates? You see, if this is the point x, y, and z, okay. If you draw the perpendicular, that will give you the z coordinate, right. So, I want to look at, I think this is a nice place to insert back that page. So, here is x, y, and z. So, this is a point P, okay. With x, y and z, okay. So how do you find the z coordinate? You take the perpendicular here. So call it this point Q, right. So x, y and 0. So this is the z coordinate, okay. Now what we are trying to do was on if that point has to go on a circle, right, somewhere. So that will be part of the cylinder if you look at that way that will be a cylinder, right. So to find out this point whether it is here or here or here or here, right, if I take the projection of this, okay, so that will be this circle, does not look like a nice circle but let me draw it better probably. Okay. So this I should know what is the, if, if this is the point which is coming here, right, then I should know how much is that angle, right. See the point is, this point P is determined by this height and how much I have to rotate, how much I have to rotate on that cylinder. Points on a cylinder are determined at what height you are, okay, and how much you are going around the cylinder. If I want to determine all the points on a cylinder, then I should know how high I am. So that is Z coordinate, okay, up or down. That is the Z coordinate, and how much I should rotate on the cylinder to locate it, okay. So to locating it then means I have to find out what is this radius, okay. So what is this uh, angle? Is say x axis that angle is theta. So coordinates will be R and 
theta, but what is r? What is the height r? What is that uh, radius r? So, this is z, okay. So, uh, this is z, okay. Angle is theta. So, what are the coordinates? If this distance is r, okay. Then it is r cos theta, r sin theta, z is equal to z. Polar coordinates on the circle, basically. Okay, so that gives you uh, cylindrical coordinates. So these are called cylindrical coordinates. So you can locate points in the play uh, in the R three by looking at points as points on concentric cylinders with the same axis. Okay. Next, okay, next here it is. Yeah, so that is called cylindrical coordinates. Uh, one more coordinates I would like to introduce in R3 before I go to change of variable formula. So, let me uh, write that. Probably will revise it again next time. So, look at x, y and z. So, here is a point P. Okay. So, one way is Cartesian coordinate is by looking at parallelopips and looking at the corner. The second was looking at the cylinders, concentric cylinders with expanding okay, radii. The third is once again, let us look at this distance. So, that is OP, P is the point. So, now in the polar coordinates, we looked at a circle, but in R3, let us look at it as a sphere. So, let us look at this uh, R3 being made of concentric spheres of increasing radii. Okay. So, if I look at that, then what will be uh, this? So, here is here is a sphere. Okay. So, look at this point, look at this distance okay, from uh, origin that is r. So, we can imagine that point in r 3 lying on a sphere of radius r, but there are so many points on the sphere. Which point we are referring to? How do I look at that point? Okay. So, to locate that point, let us look at cut by a circle of that height, cut the sphere by a plane of height z. Okay. If you cut it by z, then if I can tell you what, what point okay, on that circle it lies, that will be okay or another way could be a easier way probably could be, let us just look at So, this is uh, the sphere, this is the point P, okay. that is the z axis. Another way that could be to locate that circle would be, still imagine this to be a rod. Okay, which is fixed at some angle phi with the z axis. Z axis vertical one, here is a rod which is going. How much this rod can rotate? That will give you points on the circle. So, how much this rod can rotate? That will give you points on that circle of that height z. Is it okay? So, how are the points located here on that? How will the these will be located by how much is the angle and what is the radius of that circle? Polar coordinates on that circle, 
the easiest way of locating the points on the circle is by polar coordinates and how do we determine the polar coordinates by finding the radius of the circle and how much you are revolving right so if i bring it down here so this point is z this is r this distance is uh, we have called it say rho so rho is the distance op is equal to rho this is r and what is this angle if this angle is phi what is this angle that is 90 minus phi right if this is phi this also is phi vertically opposite angle, angles right parallel lines so what is this r equal to in terms of phi you can describe what is this r this is a right angle triangle this is r this is phi so what is r equal to rho this is a right angle triangle o q p is a right angle triangle right this is 90 minus phi this is phi so this is the height so rho sin phi is that okay height oq divided by op is equal to sin of the angle right this is the region so oq is r that is equal to rho sin phi so if this is rho sin phi this r and this angle is theta so what is x coordinate polar coordinates r cos theta right but what is r it is rho sin phi so it is rho sin phi cos theta and what is y that was rho sin theta what are the polar coordinates r cos theta r sin theta what is r r is sin phi sin theta and z what is z equal to this is z in terms of rho and phi it is rho this is z right this distance is rho and this height is z so is rho cos phi is it okay in that right angle triangle that height was this was rho so this was rho this was uh, z and this was theta and this was r so we get relation between x y and z and how much distance you are how much that rod is rotated from the z axis that is angle phi and how much to locate that point theta how much you have to go on that circle so three things determine your position of a point and conversely if i give you these three things i can locate a point right so rho theta and phi where rho is bigger than or equal to 0 theta is between 0 and 2 pi and phi what is angle phi that is between z axis so how much is the angle possible with z axis 0 you can go down so 0 to pi so theta is phi is between 0 and pi so again three things determine the points on r3 namely rho how much it is away how much you are deviating from z axis and how much you are rotating around x axis right so these are called spherical coordinates so these are called spherical coordinates so in r3 there are three types of coordinates possible one cartesian coordinates by looking at the corners of all parallel opets second is by looking at a point as a point on the cylinder concentric cylinders or third is by looking at concentric spheres okay and there is no uh, wonder 
that uh, these spherical coordinates are very useful when you want to describe the earth. Any point on the earth you want to describe, right? Earth is a fixed radius. So, rho is fixed. Imagine a sphere for fixed radius. So, what are other things that will determine how much you are away and how much you are rotating? So, these are what are the longitudes and the latitudes of any point on the surface of the earth which determine your location on the surface. So, if you go to Google and you want to find your location, it will tell you in terms of phi, right, longitudes and latitudes, how much you are away from and the base, how much you are rotating. So, these are very useful in uh, modern navigation, modern location of points on the sphere. So, and we will see how they are useful in our mathematical thing also.